Over at UKIP's ready-made headquarters in Haywood, there's no surprise in how close they came. Three days ago, Labour were putting it out there, they had a 20-point lead. And the feeling we had on the street that it was nothing like that, we actually felt we were in with a real chance of winning it. Had I had another 24 hours, I would have won this seat. For Labour, it's time to work out the maths. We weren't expecting the Tory vote to collapse um, quite as dramatically as it obviously has. And I, I can't choose my opponents. It was very close and obviously we've got a job of work to do now. So a Labour victory by the skin of their teeth. They have an MP but only just. UKIP have given them a real run for their money. This is also a setback for the Conservatives and the Liberal Democrats with the general election looming. One thing is clear though, UKIP are not going away. So you usually vote Labour? Yeah. So why have you changed your mind? Because I just think that Labour are a spent force. It's everything what I agree with. Like, if you come to this country, you shouldn't claim unless you've been here for at least two years. Yeah, I voted uh, for UKIP. Why? Uh, more for the immigration policy. The others are doing nothing, so that's why I'm, it's a new one, isn't it, UKIP? This seat, for years a safe Labour seat, is now one of the most marginal in the country, and UKIP will be back. We are the guys who've had momentum over the past week. We're finding on doorsteps, uh, speaking to people, that people like what we have to say, and that's the key. When people hear what UKIP are about, they come out and they vote for us. And now what we've proved is UKIP is the only opposition to Labour in the north of England. But one of Labour's elder statesmen has this warning. Well, it's all very well going around prattling on that we're listening, but do we actually, does the listening lead to change in our actions? That's what voters are going to judge us by. Unless we respond, this is actually going to ripple right through in the tidal wave to the general election. And that could have implications for Labour seats across the North West. Uh, we did invite the new Labour MP, Liz McInnes, to be with us. She was unavailable. But we are joined from Middleton by John Bickley, UKIP's runner-up in the by-election, and, in fact, who's standing against Graham Evans here in Weaver Vale next year. But we have to fight for every single vote. There's no doubt about that. But the idea that John Bickley's the answer uh, to people's problems is a nonsense. The truth is he's the worst type of career politician. He's tried for Withenshaw, he's tried for Middleton, now he's trying for Weaver Vale, wherever he lays his hat is his home. Well, it's not I mean, it's, it's not, not it's ideal, not his fault is it? By elections keep well, coming it, up, but he doesn't it? have to keep fighting them, does he? <laughs> I mean, well, he just wants to be an MP. That's that's a sort of approach well, to politics that the public don't like. Um, well, let's ask John Bickley to respond to that. Absolutely pathetic. Uh, the Labour Party had a disaster on Thursday night. The only reason they won the seat is because of the Liberals. Their vote collapsed. The Tory vote is collapsing all across the North. It's interesting that the new MP for this constituency couldn't turn up for today's show. I find that really interesting. Also, I noticed that when Mr Miliband came up on Friday, he was so interested in interacting with this constituency, he neither spoke to reporters nor met any members of the public. That's how interested Labour are in learning the lessons. Um, John, what, what about um, on your campaign? I'm just wondering, did Europe come up on the doorstep at all? Yes, it did. I mean, people are increasingly aware that when they look at people like Simon Danjuk and Graham Evans and the rest of the political class strutting around Westminster, trying to look as though they're in power... You were desperate to get in there, John. You're a carpetbagger going around every seat in finish. the North let West to try and become a Member uh, of Parliament so that you can strut around. Let me finish. Uh, I'm 61 years old. I've only been doing this for 18 months. I'm doing it out of conviction. Um, I actually was brought up in Withenshaw. I have every right to stand you there. You said you'd been brought up in party. Middleton. I lived in you, this constituency. You're going to be saying you were brought I up was, in Weaver Vale. I lived in Middleton. Excuse me. I lived in Middleton for five years as a young boy. Uh, I, I don't seem to remember Mr Miliband living in Doncaster when he was brought up. And I don't seem to remember Mr Clegg being a man born in Sheffield. So let's have none of this nonsense. You guys are running scared. You've betrayed the British people. The Labour Party in particular is morally bankrupt. And UKIP is listening to what people want. And you're running scared. You nearly lost on Thursday night. You were bragging you were going to win by 20 points three days earlier. Another day, we would have won the seat. OK, let me bring in um, Stuart. Um, what does the result say for the Labour Party? Well, this should be a wake-up call for the Labour Party on a huge scale, uh, but it's not really the first wake-up call they've had. I think they've been hitting the snooze button on multiple occasions. Um, this close to a general election, 200 days to a general election, a safe Labour seat, 
this is the kind of territory Labour should be winning by huge margins if they want a realistic chance of winning a majority in 2015. To be sneaking this close really should worry them immensely. Tories didn't seem to be campaigning at all. Uh, no, we were campaigning, although I wasn't there personally, but I, I agree with uh, Simon, the type of language that all parties use, we, we have to speak differently. The one thing that UKIP do, they do, they do speak the language that uh, voters uh, seem to understand. Immigration is a massive issue, but there is only one party that is offering an in-out referendum, and that's the Conservative that's Party. John Bickley, come back in quickly, please. I mean, these guys are delusional. Stop misleading the British people into thinking we can control our borders while we're still members of the EU. You are selling the British nation a pup. As long as we're members of the EU, we cannot control our borders. And UKIP's been very clear. We want a system very much like the Australian system. We want people to come here who are going to add value. But as long as we're in the EU, we have no control over our borders. And for Mr Cameron, and for La uh, Labour Party, suddenly want to talk about immigration, although they didn't at any time during the campaign, is really double dealing. Okay, People are John, seeing through this. Let, let's this is pick, why both John, parties sorry are losing to interrupt, out. But uh, we, we'll pick that up in a minute because UKIP, as we said, was close in Haywood and Middleton. But what does it mean for their prospects ahead of the general election in May? Stuart Pollitt's been asking whether Labour or the Tories should be more worried. <laughs> Two seaside resorts, one Tory, one Labour, but both places where UKIP are having a growing influence. In these turbulent political times, the research shows that Nigel Farage's party can make waves across this stretch of Lancashire coastline by taking votes from the Tories up there to the north, but also pinching Labour supporters here in Blackpool. I do think UKIP has got the answer. I don't think anybody else has come up with anything better, actually, at the minute. I think he's just going for the populist vote because he knows he's, he's not going to achieve anything at the moment. He may in future, and I think that's where the danger lies. UKIP have a candidate and campaign up and running in Blackpool South. The seat was highlighted as the 29th most susceptible Labour constituency yeah. to a UKIP vote. Are you seriously saying that UKIP can win Blackpool South? Yes, I am. Is it disaffected Labour voters that you're getting your votes from? No, I think, it's, I think it's everybody. I think it's real people want real people to solve real problems. And it's as simple as Let that. Let me ask you about um, the appeal of Ed Miliband. Because Liz McInnes, when I interviewed her on election night, said he was extremely popular. People were coming out of their houses to meet him. Is that your experience? Well, I didn't go on the doorstep with him, so I'm sure if that's what Liz says happened, then that's exactly what happened in Airwood and Middleton. He's a, he's a great leader. Uh, he's a great leader? He's a great leader. He's determined to take us into the general election and win it for Labour. And that's what the country needs. We need a change at the top in terms of government, and, and he's going to lead us towards it. If uh, John does uh, an aggressive campaign like, like he's done uh, on Thursday, then there's a very good chance that Labour will win uh, Weaver Vale and Ed Miliband will end up in uh, number 10. Uh, John Bickley, what do you make of that? Dear, dear. Well, first of all, um, it's not yet been decided whether I'll be standing in Haywood and Middleton again. Um, we have to sort of analyse what's happened. I was only elected for this by-election, so um, the paint's not dry yet on whether well, I'll be standing here again in Weaver vale or in, in Weaver Vale. And um, I, what, what I think is quite clear now is that in the north of England, the Tories are in disarray. They can't win uh, many northern seats anymore. And Labour, who have been rather arrogant about thinking they can just walk into uh, so, Downing Street next year based on their northern vote, are in big trouble. It, you don't uh, seriously think, though, John, do you, that seat. you might win any seats at the general election in the north-west? Oh, I think we can win a lot of seats in the north. So will he be writing to the Northwich Guardian to say that he's clear. not standing as the Weaver Vale candidate? Um, Graham's asking whether, well, I think uh, I, he's saying he hasn't decided. But, but let me just ask you, John, which seats oh, in the I, North... I think, Go on. Um, I, would, I would want to stand here again because of the reaction yeah. I've had from people here who um, have warmed to me and the campaigns of UKIP. The fact we've... Un un so understood, John. Labour, which seats in the uh, North West do you think you could win in at the next general election? Uh, oh, Haywood and Middleton. Any and others? in fact, we've availed, and, and probably a lot more. But I can't stand for more than one seat, unfortunately. Okay. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> Even UKIP can't do that. So, uh, you were very critical of UKIP during the by-election campaign mm, and some of the absolutely. leaflets they put out. Yeah, some really nasty, aggressive campaigning. Actually, what was the problem? Uh, uh, well, another kind of campaigning oh, that actually dear, turns dear, the public dear. off. They, they were exploiting the grooming scandal that had occurred in Rochdale and Harewood and Middleton, and I actually thought it was disgraceful. And it's not just me saying that. The, the parents oh, of victims uh, who 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 were exploited. Well, you didn't like uh, them using the 
phrase betrayed white working class girls? No, well, no, I didn't like the approach at all. At they were all. trying to exploit the victims of, of this terrible, uh, horrific crimes, and I think that's unf unfortunate to say that. Unacceptable. Uh, John, um, uh, can I reply to yes, that? Yes, please. Uh, I, I, I can't believe what Mr. Dandruck has just said. It seems it's okay when he wants to write a book. Uh, to talk about one type of abuse, but when anyone else decides they want to look at what's been happening here, where, let's not forget, no politician in this area has fallen on their sword for what has happened. And in Rotherham, we basically had to peel them out of the rocks to take uh, responsibility let, for let the rape and grooming of 1,400 girls. Just briefly. Uh, uh, let, let, hold on, let Simon, Simon just respond uh, quickly, John, because you've raised an important uh, issue there. No, well, it, this just isn't comparable at all. Labour have spoken a lot on the abuse. Uh, I'm one of the people, Tom Watson's another Labour MP, who've spoken a lot about abuse mm -hmm. and including Rotherham grooming and including Rochdale grooming. Uh, UKIP have never spoken about it at all. John, quick response. We're running yes, out we of have. time. Uh, uh, we have spoken about this and it's quite clear people around here are disgusted. Bobby used to work around here in the 70s, new grooming was going on, he reported it to superiors and they and the local Labour Council said keep quiet, we don't want this disgusting and upsetting the immigrant population. But John, You've got Simon is saying that you deliberately tried to exploit victims of child no, sex no, grooming. No. Uh, I'm sorry, that's not the case. It's quite clear from what happened in Rotherham that the political class, particularly the Labour Party, tries to hide all this under the carpet. Uh, I, take, uh, I make no apologies for wanting to actually uh, talk about this because it's what most people around here knew was going okay. on and there was no one who would listen to them. John, thank you very much.